Hi, this is Simon. Today I want to continue working with Arduino, doing some more explorations of using these microcontrollers to create sound. If you haven't watched my previous video, you should be fine, but I am going to start with some of the code that we already had. I've simplified this code, I've taken out the potentiometer part, and so this should now create a tone. I have my delay time set to 1, so that means that 1 milliseconds is half a cycle, right? Because it goes up for 1 millisecond and down for 1 millisecond. Because it writes high, waits, writes low, and then waits. That means a full cycle is 2 milliseconds. And so if my math is right, this should be 500 hertz. Let's check it out. Plugged it in. Upload. Not hearing much yet. Okay, so as always, I'll check this with 500 hertz that I make an audacity or something. But what I'm interested in doing today is testing the outer reaches of this. So if we think that the range of our hearing is from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, that doesn't necessarily mean that the Arduino and or the piezo can create those frequencies. So let's try to go to the very, very extreme low first. So I need to think about what this delay time should be for that. If I'm thinking about it correctly, I think it's 25 milliseconds. Let's think about that. 25 milliseconds times two, because it's only half of the cycle, gets me to 50 milliseconds. 1000 divided by 50 is 20. So let's try this. All right, we've got some sound there. Now, let's think about that. This is a square wave that it's making, or, or probably reasonably close to a square wave, because it's going up and down. It's turning its voltage on and off. And the thing about a square wave is it contains harmonics, unlike a sine wave. So we can hear this, but of course I wouldn't be 100% convinced that we're hearing that fundamental, the lowest pitch, at 20 hertz. That's pretty neat. The next thing I want to do is I want to try exploring the higher pitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this to microseconds. So a millisecond is a thousandth of a second. A microsecond is a millionth of a second. So there's actually a different command delay microseconds. So now we need to do a little bit different math, but this is essentially we need to make our numbers a thousand times as big. So if I wanted to go back to that, what I was saying was 500 hertz, we'll start with instead of one millisecond will do 1,000 microseconds. Uh, that sounds pretty close to me, to what we originally had. Okay, so then, let's say I want to try to create something at 5,000 hertz. Let's make this 100. All right, that, that might be 5,000 hertz. Let's try 10,000. So then I would do 50. That does sound an octave above what I just played. Let's try 15,000. So I've done my math in advance. I'll put it up on up here, but let's do 33 there. Okay. And then just for fun, let's do 20,000. And I know uh, from a, another video that I did that I actually don't hear up at 20,000. So if I hear a pitch here, then probably uh, we're, not, we're not necessarily just hearing 
the, the sound that we're producing. Yeah, I definitely hear something there. So again, I don't know if the Arduino can go fast enough or my piezo is going fast enough. If it's creating a tone here, which I can kind of hear, my guess is that maybe the Arduino isn't updating quite as quickly. It's not able to write on and off to that quite as quickly. After this video, I might poke around, see if there's any resources about what the actual speed it can write on and off. Okay. But that's kind of neat. Interesting to understand the characteristics of this if we're going to be using it as an oscillator. I wanted to try one other thing. I'm going to comment out this delay time. I'm going to leave everything else, but actually I'm going to change all this. So we're not going to do anything with delay time. I want to try to make some noise. So when I think about noise, I think about, okay, well, it's going to be random. Since I'm using the digital pin here, it can only be on or off. I can't write different discrete amplitudes. I think I could do that with the analog writes, but let's leave that aside. Let's focus on this digital for a moment. So let's say if random, which chooses a random number now between 0 and 99, I believe. I'll double check that. I think it's one less than the number I put in. If that's less than 50, so a 50-50 shot, then let's write our voltage on. Otherwise, let's write it off. So now there's a 50-50 chance that it'll be high or low going through this loop as fast as Arduino can. So this should give us some static sound. Let's find out. Plug it in. Upload. That sounds like some noise to me. So I want to now try to see if I can do a sample and hold with this noise. Whenever I think about noise, that's what I think about. So for example, and I'm not sure that this is the best way to do this, but let's just put in a delay. And so this will be the time in milliseconds for sample and hold. Delay, and we'll do delay time. Okay, 25 is too long. I now that I think about it. Let's try one. Hey, and there's our crunchy digital, uh, what, NES sounding noise. So what I'm doing now is I'm choosing that random up or down, and then I'm delaying the delay time. So let's go back to microseconds. It's gonna be way too short, but let's do now 100. 1,000, whoops. All right, I like this. So now what I'm gonna do is let's make this controllable. Bring over my breadboard. Potentiometer. Just like last time. Five volts. Uh, yoink. Ground. On the other side. Bink. Ground. Get a green wire here in the middle. Bink. Going into A0. Okay. Jump back to our program here. Ints. Analog pin equals A0. That's the pin we're going to read from. And then we will set this delay time to be delay 
time equals and I'll log read and uh log in. I think I did that right. Log in more upload. Oh, I'm just not plugged in properly here. Let's unplug the board. Generally not a great idea to be moving wires when it's plugged in. Should already be uploaded even when I plug it in. Whoa, that's pretty effective. Now, let's keep in mind this potentiometer, the analog read, is going from 0 to 1023. So it's changing that millisecond delay time of the sample and hold from effectively 0 all the way down to 1023. Now, uh, if I wanted to multiply that by 10, we can see what happens. Turn the volume on that a little bit. That's pretty good. Uh, I want to try one more thing, and that's using an LDR. Now, I believe I can. Ignore the ground here, so... And now... I can vary what I pull down to ground. I can set that range. Let's try this. Yeah, so when I open that all the way, it's not effective. When I close it all the way, it's not. So this is a 100k resistor. So I probably want like a 10k resistor. Hey, but that's pretty cool. Got some 8-bit sounds. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to do today. It's interesting, again, so I'm just using random noise, but then I'm changing the, the sample and hold, changing how fast it chooses those random numbers. And we get this kind of nostalgic, glitchy sound. Fun to do with the LDR. Mess around, let me know what you come up with.